Hello, I'm Wendy Pollack. Today I'm with SAP Data Unleashed, and we're going to discuss partnership uh, and collaboration between SAP and the rest of the ecosystem. And today I have with me my dear friends, uh, Vanki. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Vanki Viraragvan. I'm the Chief Product Officer for Data Robot. And hi, I'm Maribel Lopez, the Founder and Principal Analyst at Lopez Research, and we help uh, enterprise buyers figure out technology change. Fantastic. And you know, I'm very curious about this partnership because it's been different market for a long time. So how do you see it from your end? This data robot, you know, we are a, a leading company sort of that, that builds AI, um, an AI platform. And what that means is helping customers sort of take their data, build great models, and get value out of them. And so for us, this partnership is super exciting because uh, with, with the data sphere, we have the ability to sort of really look at all the data that's available. Uh, and I think in machine learning, it's data is oxygen. And so it's super important to sort of say, here is all the data and all the context of the data that allows the data scientists to really iterate quickly with the, with the data. And then, more importantly, take that model and put it back into where the business critical workflow or application is so that it actually gets business value. Yeah, and just to riff off of that for a moment, you know, one of the things that we see a lot of customers struggle with is they have data in a lot of different systems, but then how do you actually get to that point where you have the right data in the right context into uh, machine learning models so that you can really evolve where your insight is. You know, we've had basic analytics for a while, but I think we're trying to take it to the next level and that seamless access to data and the context that's around it, I think it's super important to get us to that next level. Yeah, I think for many years, data scientists were struggling actually getting into production data in order to build a good, efficient machine learning models. And what we've seen is, like you all mentioned, like a lot of data silos. So I'm very curious to see how this whole new wave of innovation is going to help exhaust the data that's available for the data scientists to build their models to the next level and really drive that innovation. And you know, from a technical point of view, when we think about that collaboration, what does the customer get out of that? Sure. Let me start a little bit sort of why it's so important to have all the data and why this, this is a unique opportunity for us. The thing about data scientists is they want all the data because they're looking for signal, yeah. right? In fact, many times there's a thing, they don't necessarily want clean data because they want, they want all the data because they want to know where the signal is. And so the idea is that someone else has sort of ex extracted the data, done some cleaning on it, so a bunch of data might be lost. And so what happens with this partnership is that we have access to the full a data set that is you know, where it's supposed to be. And then that allows us to sort of use data robots uh, a technology to actually figure out where there is great signal, where there is not, we'll sort of throw it away. And so we can sort of really get the right kind of information to actually build the, build the model. and allows us to have the great conversation with the subject matter expert on how does it work. That's why the context is important. It's not just a table and a column name. It actually has some context about what, what it actually means. And so being able to put that together is super important for making ML really work. Interesting. I think one of the things I think is really important that's a shift in the market is companies being okay with the concept of a data partner and sharing that data and information for the for the good of the customer. And you know, you mentioned context and other things. We spend a lot of time talking about uh, either cleaning the data or replicating the data in other places. And there's always been this discussion of like, what is the right truth? And this helps to maybe alleviate some of those concerns. Yeah, and also it's, what is the right truth? And like, what is a signal in this world, right? How can data scientists leverage the two together mm -hmm. in order to even start assessing the signal or know what to look for? Because a lot of them are kind of struggling around feature engineering, domain expertise, and so on. How does it look like? So you know, that, I think that's one of the great things about this partnership is we are quite complementary. So SAP has all the data, and it, it's sort of like you know, it's sort of being able to sort of virtualize across all of the different data sets that they have. Uh, but then what we are really good at in DataRobot is the ability to sort of allow uh, data scientists of all kinds of skill levels really sort of participate in the data science process. So you're a data scientist, you might be a citizen data scientist, you might be a pro data scientist, but the idea is that you're able to use that data and really work with the business owner to, uh, to sort of make a model and sort of discuss it to make sure that it's, it's, it's great. So I think it's really important that uh, we sort of abstract a lot of the complexity of the data systems mm -hmm. and the data platforms and really allow them to focus on what's in the data and what's, what's in the me meaning of the data. I and mean, I think you're also looking at um 
you know, vendors can have tools and there can be third party tools and, and really what I think people are gravitating towards is what's the right tool for what I'm trying to do. And so you, you pick the tool for the types of models that you're looking at or to streamline to figure out what models you should be looking at, which is a really big challenge. Uh, and you mentioned this concept and I always get a chuckle out of the citizen data scientist because oh. it just doesn't sound like that should even be a thing. But what I do think it gets at is that not everybody has the same breadth and depth of technology expertise, so they need tools that will help them make sense of the data at all levels of the stack so that you can you know, leverage whatever you have um, for skill set in your organization, but still get the best insight. Yeah, I, I do want to sort of talk a little bit about this. this is, most people forget the citizen data scientist, the data scientist part. Yeah. <laughs> they are data scientists. They just yeah. don't necessarily choose to know you know, how to you know, code in Python, but they're very smart and they understand the science. And so what we really have to do is give them a set of options for not requiring you to like, you know, download a notebook and download, you know, Python and, um, and uh, PyTorch in order to get the first le level of work done. But, but I think it's absolutely right. I think, you know, you have to understand data science because it is a uh, specialized uh, field. But at the same time, you really have to sort of say, People who are closest to the business are more effective at sort of getting determining where the value is. Well, they want to. You, they're the people that understand what the business outcome That's should right. be, That's right? Exactly. And there's one thing to understand how to code a model to create data output. There's a whole other thing of understanding. Well, what would be the most interesting data to have? That's if you right. Have any data in the world or any insight in the world? What would that be? Right. Yeah, it's really interesting. It reminds me a lot about the machine learning life cycle. When we look at, you know, first of all, we did the, all the experiments, and then we want to deploy and actually monitor all the work that we're doing in production. So, well, I have finally I have access to all this great data that was locked, um, and now I can build those experiments and kind of leverage and find the signal and build a healthy uh, model. At the end of the day, I want to also be able to deploy it to a place where people can take advantage and gain the insights and the value out of that, where we know sometimes it relates to either, you know, different system that SAP kind of manages. So how is that flow of bringing the data in, running the experiments, reaching a good state, a healthy state of the model, deciding, okay, I want to go with that, and then actually deploying it back and still maintaining the great monitoring capabilities. It's one thing to build a great model and even get some insights from it. But if you want to really realize the value of AI at scale, you have to put it where every user is using it. Mm -hmm. And that means you need to be in the after business surfaces that business users are in. And, that's, and so when you try to do it all by yourself, uh, you end up with sort of like saying, hey, look, I have this model, but I have to do a bunch of new engineering and new sort of development effort to sort of integrate it. And that's a bunch of friction. But what is really great about this sort of an integration like what we're uh, doing here is that you're able to take the model and put it right back into the into the application because it's all integrated already, mm. right? And so you're really able to sort of get that model back into uh, the space where business users can get used, use it and sort of get value from it. Well, and one of the things that I saw when I was looking at your demo that I thought was extremely compelling was trying to figure out, you know, what is the best model? That's right. You know, so you you might have a, a limited knowledge set over the types of models that you would typically create. There may be numerous models, but also having that insight of the performance of, well, you, you selected one. We thought that was the best one. Is that really the best one? Should we be looking at another one? You know, how performant was that? Is there a way for us to really up our game even yet another layer? And I, I'm not really sure that we had um, that much visibility and insight before. So it, it's really, uh, once again, trying to get us a step forward in the whole process. Yeah, it's definitely an agile process, building machine learning at scale and reaching the point where we're actually delivering ROI for the business. That's and, right. Um, and so now that we have these systems and we have that partnership, the great partnership and integration, I was wondering from a specific use case point of view, like how do you envision people to leverage the two together when they're just getting started? Yeah, I think there are many ways. I think, you know, right now we are sort of focused on the early stage, which is like taking a bunch of use cases. You know, I talked about uh, customer churn. You could talk about forecasting, financial forecasting, mm -hmm. or supply chain forecasting. Uh, the idea is that, you know, the data scientist is working closely with the business owner. They sort of look at the data that they have available and sort of, and again, we talked about a lot, this new partnership really helps us gain access to a lot more unfiltered data that allows us to sort of look at what the ground truth is. Do the iteration, which you talked about a lot of, the iteration is sort of super important. And then being able to sort of take that and then put it, putting it back in, uh, that, that is sort of the heart of sort of what we need to do. 
I don't actually, there's so many different use cases that this can apply to, yes. right? <laughs> I mean, really, when you're thinking about it, you're trying to put data into every process in the business, and that's a big change, right? We had applications, and now we're actually, to your point, trying to feed information back into the application in a seamless way so that someone can take the best action. But what I see people actually looking at is the first thing you should be doing is saying, what's our key KPIs within the organization, and where do we think that by you know inserting certain information into an application, we can get a huge win towards that KPI. Right. And you know, whenever you put in any kind of technology, you're trying to figure out like what is the thing that's going to give me the most business value. It's a land and expand approach, right? You come in, you demonstrate some value, you move on to the next 5, 10, 20, 30 use cases. So that's right. that totally shows up in sort of our experience with customers, which is we have a horizontal platform, so we can sort of build any kind of model. But what we find is that there are, and there are numerous use cases that we, people come back to all the time. And so sort of taking one of those land uh, use cases and saying, look, let's really make a win out of this. And then being able to make sure that you're able to take that and put it into production, get value from it. That gets everyone to be like, oh, that's interesting. I want to do the next one, right? And so sort of getting that little uh, virtual cycle going is sort of super important. Yeah, and make me, make me think, in time we have these systems uh, that work together, do we still need data scientists to kind of jump in and tweak the algorithm, or can we automate the whole process with the machine mm. learning pipeline? <laughs> Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm having trouble seeing there being zero data scientists in an organization. I mean, there are things you can automate, but I think the important thing, we were just talking about iteration. It's a living, breathing thing. Your goals change over time. What you're trying, uh, you know, what the data is telling you will make you do different things. So uh, it, it's it's like saying that you don't need humans anymore because you have AI, right? There's there's always got to be a human in the loop somewhere. So I think it's the same with data scientists. There's a data scientist in the loop somewhere. It's just maybe you don't need 150 of them now. Maybe you can have a smaller number. Maybe they can be more directed about the types of things yeah. they do. I think. Uh, so I, I would say, like, I think data centers are critical to this problem because it is a special skill. Now, having said that, I think what, what we want to really do is take all the work that is not about data science, right? The finding the data, uh, the setup the of the thing, the mm -hmm. arguments about can I access mm -hmm. to the data, like is it secure, is it not secure? So the more we can sort of make the platforms really sort of set a higher bar, that allows data scientists to be highly leveraged. So they really, really work on two problems, which is understand the data and using the, using the models they built to work with the context of the business subject matter expert and sort of really saying where is the business value, right? Mm -hmm. That I think is a job for data scientist. But so much of the time is spent on all the other things, the arguments about you know which platform to have and what to, where to do it. That is what all the stuff we wanted to move and that allows you to, I don't necessarily have lower number of data scientists, but have the data scientist to get a lot more done across the business because every single problem can be enhanced with data science. Uh, but we, I don't think we quite get all the uh, leverage that we want today. Yeah. yeah, there's just too much friction That's right. in the process for anybody to actually focus 80 to 100% of their time on what their job was supposed to be. Maybe they're really only spending 40% of the time on the real data That's scientist right. work because there's everything that surrounds the building it, the maintaining it, the uh, automatic checking of it, you know, all those things. So if you can actually eliminate a bunch of that process work, you can really focus on what delivers yeah. value. I mean, there's a total joke that like, you know, most of the time data scientists do the, most of the time they're working on stuff they're not uh, sort of, they don't enjoy, and not, it's not data science either. It's just mm -hmm. like, you know, getting data and like arguing with people and all that stuff. And so the more you take that out, the more they can focus on the real thing, which is adding value to the business. Yeah, delivering the ROI that right. they promised to deliver. Fantastic. So we discussed a lot of different topics, discussing the collaboration, the partnership, discussing the different personalities, also the, the data scientists, the, uh, the citizen data scientist as well, which means that we can have different skills. Sometimes we can bring different skills to the table. And I was wondering, what's the last kind of thing that you want people to take away uh, from, from this? No, I, you know, I want to sort of first say, like, I'm super excited about the partnership. I think it, uh, you know, so much of the world's most important data is in SAP. And I think like, you know, for data scientists, it, they've always received this data through all kinds of other processing. So being able to like really get access to the real data uh, and sort of the broad sort of data in the SAP ecosystem, I think it's super important. Uh, you know, and I, I also like the fact that's on the core data science side, but what I'm really excited about is the ability to sort of take those models and put it back into production in the business applications. And that is, I think, the place where we're really going to sort of uh, get, get the wins. Well, from where I sit, I mean, I think I've been 
hearing from customers and from technology vendors for a long time that they're going to help people unlock the power of their data. And what's exciting is that each year we get closer to That's that, right. right? Each year we get better tools, we get better partnerships to get closer to that. So perhaps when somebody says that phrase to a um, enterprise technology buyer today, uh, they can actually deliver on it. So thank you so much, everyone, for being with us today. That was SIP Data Unleashed. Thank you.